everyone, Will from Project BRZ here. Today I'm doing part two of my oil temperature analysis, having installed the OEM style oil cooler on my car yesterday. So I've got the I've got everything running in exactly the same configuration as I did for part one of the video. So if you haven't already watched that, please watch that before watching this one. It makes it'll make a lot more sense then. What I'm doing is I've started from a cold start again and we're just watching to see how the coolant temperature and oil temperatures rise up in proportion to each other. What I'm expecting having installed this oil cooler is that the oil temperature should rise a lot more quickly in proportion with the coolant temperature than what we saw yesterday. So um, so we'll just drive along. I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut for now while we just watch those temperatures and we'll just see what happens. one of the video we saw that the coolant temperature came up a lot more quickly than the oil temperature did and um, I mentioned that ideally what you want to have is the oil temperature come up to temperature more quickly uh, in proportion with the coolant temperature so that you're not having a huge difference between the two so that when your engine shows that it's warm up on your gauge it means that it actually is closer to operating temperature than otherwise so it does look like it's heating up a little more quickly, but I'll have to go back and have another look at the graphs from the first video to see exactly. <clears throat> now the second thing that we're gonna be looking at once everything is up to temperature is that the peak oil temperature should be lower. And also after they do spike up from some heavy throttle, the temperature should come back down again. What we saw yesterday was after a spike in oil temperature when we backed off, when we were over about 100 degrees, the oil temperature kind of just stayed at 100 degrees. Uh, it did roll off quickly when we were over 100 degrees oil temperature, but what I'm anticipating is that it should come down again a lot more quickly with this oil cooler installed. So we'll see what happens. So what I'm noticing so far is that the, the oil temperature is definitely coming up more quickly than it did before. I recall from part one that the oil temperature was roughly about 20 degrees cooler than the coolant temperature while it was warming up. And then once the, once the coolant reached its 89 degree kind of optimum operating temperature, the oil temperature continued to rise up until it kind of met in the middle. And then it kind of sat there until I pushed hard. And then once I started to push hard, the oil temperature came up and it ended up settling about 10 degrees higher than the coolant temperature did. So the coolant's just reached its normal operating temperature of 89 degrees there now. So what'll be interesting is to see if that oil temperature does actually influence the, the um, coolant temperature and bring the coolant temperature up at all. Now we won't see that happen until the oil temperature exceeds the coolant temperature obviously. But it is interesting to see that that oil temperature is only 10 degrees behind the coolant temperature, whereas yesterday when I shot part one, I think at this stage the oil temperature was still only about 40 degrees odd. So, um, so the oil's definitely warmed up more quickly, which is exactly what we were hoping for. So that's excellent. All right. 
Alright, so our oil temperature and our coolant temperature are now exactly the same as each other, so we can start to push a little bit harder and see if that oil temperature creeps up to sort of level out at 10 degrees higher than the coolant does, like it did in part one of the video. So I've got a bit of a clear road in front of me at the moment, so I should be able to give it a bit of a push, hopefully. Okay, so our oil and coolant temperatures are still even, pretty much, within a couple of degrees. up which you would expect but we'll see if it rolls back down more quickly than it did before when I back off again you'll remember from part one the oil temperature kind of just sat at the same yeah there you go it's dropping back down again Yeah, okay, so the coolant temperature just dropped two degrees when I backed off. Back down to pretty much in line with the coolant temperature again. Now you'll remember yesterday when I was recording without the oil cooler, once that temperature got up to above the coolant temperature, it just stayed there. So I remember we were driving along, we were sitting at about 95 degrees oil temperature and it just sat there even though the coolant was still down at 89 or 90. So it definitely does seem to be effective in cooling that oil back down again to match the temperature. What I'll do though is hopefully I'll get a bit of clear road up ahead of me now and I can give it a bit more throttle again and we'll, um, we'll try and get that oil temperature up to close to 100 degrees again like we did yesterday. See if we can even get it there to begin with. I think we will be able to. And then see, how, see if it sits at about 100 degrees like it did before or whether it rolls back down again. So. about the same as I was yesterday and I'm pretty sure we were a couple of degrees hotter than this yesterday on the um, on the oil temperature at this stage. But again I wouldn't I wouldn't expect the cooler to be holding the two temperatures exactly the same as each other. So this is about what I would expect. I think I predicted yesterday it'd probably be sitting at around 92, 94 degrees. So it's sitting at 96 at the moment with moderate throttle.
right, so what I'm finding after driving it hard for a little bit is that it's a lot harder to get that oil temperature up above 100 degrees than it was previously. Okay, so what I'm finding after driving it for a little while is two things that it is definitely harder to get that oil temperature up above 100 degrees and also that the coolant temperature isn't being greatly influenced. I was, one of the concerns that I had, well not really concerned, but one of the things I thought we might see is that the coolant temperature might sit a little bit higher all the time than it did previously, but I've seen it, I've seen it spike up a couple of times to 91 degrees, but other than other than that it hasn't it hasn't spiked up at all so so that's pretty impressive but um what i'm what i'm going to try and do now is um i'm going to try really hard to get that oil temperature up over 100 degrees so i've got some i've got some decent clear road so i'm going to give it full throttle for a good few seconds and just see what happens now yesterday in exactly the same spot under exactly the same conditions i was able to get up the oil temperature up to 105 degrees so we'll do exactly the same thing now noticing after driving for a while is that the um, well, I'm noticing two things that the coolant temperature isn't spiking it isn't it's still sitting at around that 90 degree mark like it did before which is great I was a little bit not concerned but I was I was interested to see whether that coolant temperature would sit a little bit higher with this oil cooler installed I thought that the, um, the temperatures might be influenced a little bit more than they have been but um, so far it seems to be really stable now the other, the other interesting thing is to see that I've been driving it pretty hard now for a while and I still can't get that oil temperature up over 100 degrees. Um, I'm going to loop around a roundabout up here and it'll take me down exactly the same stretch of road as I was driving down yesterday when I, when I got the temperature up to 105 degrees on the oil. So I'll loop around and I'll drive it full throttle for a good few seconds again and we'll try and, we'll try and emulate exactly what we did yesterday and see exactly what happens, so. exactly the same thing as what I did yesterday and you can see there the, um, the oil temperature hasn't gone over over 99 degrees um, yeah so yesterday doing that exact same thing the oil temperature got up to 105 so you can see there it's definitely having an influence um, one thing that I'm a little bit surprised about is that it's not it's not pulling the oil temperature back down quite as low as I thought it would it's still kind of leveling out at that 99 100 degree mark like it did without the cooler but that's not a problem because we're, um, we're not anywhere close to the maximum operating temperature of the oil. Um, it's perfectly safe to have that oil sitting at 100 degrees, no problem. Uh, it's not, it doesn't just start to become an issue until we get up to around you know, the 130 degree, 120, 130 degree range. So, so it's definitely not a problem having the oil temperature sitting a little bit higher. And you can see there, as soon as I back off, it's dropping back down by a couple of degrees again. So. So I think that the two primary benefits that we were looking for out of this cooler was number one, that it would heat the oil up more quickly when the, when the engine's starting from a cold start. And number two, that it kept the, kept the peaks lower and cooled the oil down more quickly again afterwards. And from what I can see from driving it around like this, I've driven it 
probably a little bit harder than I did yesterday without the cooler and the oil temperatures are consistently lower than they were before. So I think we can conclude that both of those goals that we hope to achieve with this oil cooler have been achieved. Oil heats up quicker and oil temperatures are kept lower. So I hope this analysis has been useful for you. Again, I picked up the oil cooler from Forge Performance Australia, which you can find on forgeperformance.com.au. Forge this is Will from Project BRZ. I hope this video has been useful for you. If it has been, please like it and subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget there's also a install guide for this oil cooler, which I'll be uploading shortly as well. So make sure you check that out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.